fam welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's tina and i make videos on lifestyle home and diy projects every single week and before we get started i just want to say thank you guys for watching the entryway makeover if you haven't noticed the background is looking really cute i'm just super happy with how everything turned out and right now i'm planning my bedroom makeover we're currently waiting on some furniture pieces and also finalizing some details so in the meantime i thought that i would do some diy dupes these are pieces that I've bookmarked from Urban Outfitters and West Elm for quite a while now. So today I'm going to show you guys how to DIY it for less. I also want to give a big thank you to our place for sponsoring today's video. You guys know that I love their stuff and they have a brand new launch. So I'm excited to show you that later on in the video. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And let's go ahead and get to DIYing. For this first project, I wanted to recreate this table from West Elm and it's basically going to be a companion piece to the DIY coffee table that I made. I know a lot of you love that project, but it can be hard to find half round dowels. So I wanted to show an alternative and also with this table, the fluting is a lot larger. So you're most likely not going to find a dowel this size. And if you do, it's probably really pricey. So we're going to find an alternative for that. And the price of the table is $200 and it's also out of stock right now. Now, so I'm very confident that we could do this for way less and I'll definitely share the project totals at the end So let's go to the hardware and see what we can find So for our base I was on the hunt for some PVC pipe and the one that I found was large enough at one and a half inches And the price was also really good, but it was 10 feet long So it was not going to fit in my car and they also don't cut the pipes in the store So what did I do? I bought a pipe cutter and I started cutting the pipe in the parking lot ready to go okay so not gonna lie i felt a little bit awkward cutting the pipe in the parking lot but you know what it had to be done and i got a few stairs but it was worth it because now they fit in my car and we saved some money all right so our pipes are secured and i got two of them so it was about 22 dollars and after using this cutting in the parking lot i found that this was really easy to use so all i'm going to do is measure and then cut this so i quickly wanted to show you guys how it works and basically every single time that you press it basically closes in closer and closer until it cuts the whole pipe. So awesome. The height of the wood round that I'm using is one inch. So I'm going to cut these pipes at 17 inches each to give us a total height of 18 inches, which is standard for a side table. And one of my goals with this project is to show you how you can DIY larger projects like this one with minimal power tools. And let me tell you, this pipe cutter was super easy to use and is a great alternative to using a saw. It was about $13 and I definitely see myself using it more for future projects. So the wood round that I'm using is 15 inches and I'm going to space them a couple inches from the edge just to get an idea of exactly where I want these to go. So this is the general shape that we are looking for. And in the middle here, I wanted to make some round discs. That way we can have a perfect circle in the middle and it will also weigh it down a lot better. So I'm gonna measure this to see the approximate length. So it's about seven inches here. And my local hardware store doesn't sell rounds that are that small. So instead, I thought that I would cut out my own. I have a bunch of scrap MDF here from the Ikea Calyx unit. This will be perfect. I'm going to cut out two or three of these and I'm just going to use my jigsaw for that. With my jigsaw, I'm cutting out three of these seven inch circles and I ended up only using two of them, but it's always a good idea to have extra just in case. It also doesn't hurt to use up any more of my scraps and since these aren't going to be seen, they don't need to be perfect circles. So I just felt comfortable cutting it myself rather than sourcing it and buying it in stores. To keep this in place, I found the center of the wood round and I just marked that off to place my MDF circle. And with some wood glue, I'm just going to place that on top and making sure that it's nice and centered. To make it super secure, I'm drilling in a pilot hole and then I'm just adding a screw straight through the middle. Our 
base is ready to go and I'm actually just gonna glue the pipes on here. So I'm using a construction adhesive and this works on wood as well as PVC. So this should give us a pretty strong bond. So I'm basically adding glue at the bottom of the pipe and then lining that up against the base. And looking back, I should have also glued the side of the pipe to add more strength, but honestly, just gluing down the bottom worked well anyways. And another thing that I would strongly suggest is to turn all the wording and the barcodes on the inside. That way you don't have to see them and it will save you a ton of work later on so that you don't have to cover them up later. Alternatively, if you're using PVC pipe for a different project and don't want the wording on there at all, you could also just use acetone and that will wipe right off. These PVC pipes really did just the trick to achieve that look of the original West Elm one. And personally, I find that these are also more readily available than half round dowels. I think they're also a great option if you want to create table legs or also want to create a fluted look with some larger dowels. And I'll have these as well as all the other materials from this video in my description box below. So make sure you check it out. To make sure that the pipes were standing straight up, I went ahead and just placed another pipe in the middle. And this one's a little bit shorter to account for the thickness of the two MDF circles. And right on top, I'm placing the other MDF circle that we cut out. Not only is it gonna help hold the pipes in place, but it's also going to help weigh the table down. I've been spending more time cooking, so we've been in the dining room and the kitchen a lot lately, and our place has just made cooking so much more enjoyable these days. I've been using our always pan, which you can see in the background, it basically lives right there, and also our perfect pot pretty much every day. They come in so many beautiful colors, and I recently just got another always pan in the color Spice, so this is just a beautiful, rich pink terracotta color and I love it so much. I'm really glad to have two now because that means that Brian and I don't have to share. We can actually cook on our own pans now. And not only is it beautiful, but it's also very high quality and it's been so thoughtfully designed. So you can see right here, we have the spatula rest, which perfectly fits right here. And when you open it, you also have the steamer basket. This is handy for pastas or vegetables or anything you need and you can just lift it right up. It is seriously such a beautiful design and along with that you can also get add-ons like their bamboo steamer or their flipping plate and their newest launch is the fry deck when i first thought that our place was coming out with this i thought it was just so genius and i totally needed one here it is i got it in the color spice to match with the rest of my cookware and it comes in multiple colors and they're always coming out with new colors so you can mix and match your cookware and this just sits perfectly on your pot or your pan this allows you to drip dry everything on the side so whether whether you're making tempura or fish, or in my case, I love to fry up dumplings, so this has been a definite game changer. So I love this, and it's been the best companion just to make cooking a lot more fun. If you wanna get your hands on any of the Our Place products, you can click on my link down below. And don't forget to use my discount code to get 10% off. I'll have all the details in the description box. And now, let's get back to the project. Okay, so you can see this part kinda needs a little help attaching to the tops and make sure that everything is aligned. So I'm just gonna use some hot glue to hold it in place since that'll dry pretty quickly and then also touch it up with more of that construction adhesive. See, this holds it so quick and it attaches to the bottom and that way there are no little gaps and everything is nice and straight. So if I was using half round wood dowels like I did in my previous projects, a brand nailer would work well for this part, but since we are working with pipes, these are hollow and we have to figure out another solution. And I think Gorilla Hot Glue is a great solution for something like this, especially when you need something that is fast setting, but also strong enough to hold things together while our construction adhesive dries. It's coming along you guys, and now we just have to wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna put something heavy on top that way it weighs all of this down to ensure that this glue has a really strong bond and we'll just let that sit overnight. It is the next day now and this is done drying so I'm going to remove my paint and then also this and let's see. Oh yeah, that is really sturdy. Wow, okay, I'm very impressed. So the next thing I wanna do, which is totally optional, is actually to fill in these gaps a little bit. So I'm gonna put some caulk in there. Again, this is optional, but I thought it would give it a nicer finish, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I think that doing this extra step just makes it look a lot more finished, and it's also going to help avoid any gaps that might happen, especially during the paint process. And it really doesn't take that long to do. Most caulks also dry in about an hour, so I think it's definitely worth the extra work.
all of the gaps are filled and it's looking real good. And one tip I wanted to share with you guys is to always cut the top of this at a 45 degree angle. That way you can get a really nice smooth finish. And ever since I started doing this, I noticed a huge difference and it's so much easier to clean off as well. I'm giving the wood a quick coat of primer and I also did sand this down earlier to make sure that it was smooth. And after this step, we're gonna get to spray painting. I'm just using a regular old flat white spray paint for this. And remember when I said that I wish that I turned the pipe lettering inside? You can definitely see that this white is going to take a little bit of time to completely cover that red ink. So to avoid this, I would strongly suggest to just turn it inside so no one would see it. And I ended up doing a few coats of the spray paint and finished it off with a clear top coat. I cannot believe how good this project came out and I'm all about the fluted trend right now. So I think this looks just as good as the inspiration photo. And if you like this project, you can totally adjust it to create a larger or even a smaller one if you wanted. And all in all, I spent $52.32 to create this side table, which includes all the pipes, the wood round, the spray paint, and even the pipe cutter, which is only a fraction of the original price of $200. This next project is inspired by Urban Outfitters. I've been wanting to make these cute little shelves. It comes in two different styles. So the smaller one is $59 while the larger one is $79. And all it really looks like is a bunch of wood screwed together. So I am very confident that we could DIY this one. And for my project, I'm gonna be making the larger one, but you can totally adjust all the sizes to make the smaller version. So for this project, I have a couple of these wood rounds here and these are basically made with plywood. So if you wanted to, you could cut out your own, but I wanted these to be perfectly round so I opted to buy them and they were about eight bucks each and you can also see that these have a straight edge on to them as opposed to the other ones that we were using you can see the layers here so you'll probably have to edge bend it later but for now I'm just gonna go and cut it in half all right, you guys, so this is a 12 inch circle. So I just measured the halfway point at six inches and marked that off. This was small enough to fit in my miter saw. So I just used that since it was easier, but you could totally use a jigsaw or even a handsaw for this part. And I ended up cutting two of these in half. So now we have something like this and one is slightly bigger than the other. I think it's... Can't even tell. So yeah, this one is a little bit bigger, so I think I'm gonna make that the top part, and then this is going to be the bottom shelf. So once we assemble it together, it's gonna look something like this. So with this one half, I'm going to map out the arches, and since this isn't perfectly half of the circle, I'm going to create a guide. So going around the whole curve, I'm marking it off at two inches, and this is going to be the bottom piece. <laughs> And to help me draw this, I used any round object that I could find that was about the same size, and this way I could just line it up with all the marks and trace it. We're gonna repeat this process with the other arch, but this one is just going to be one inch all around to sit on top of the two inch arch. After using the saw for now the third time ever, I must say that I'm feeling a lot more confident in using it. I honestly wish that I had picked it up sooner because you can do so many projects with this tool, especially if you wanna do more detailed cuts like this one. And if you're someone that's a little bit afraid of power tools, I literally was the same way and still am sometimes. But I find that since the blade on this is pretty small, it's a lot less intimidating to try it out. So if you're hesitant but have been itching to try out power tools, I would definitely definitely recommend a jigsaw. So this is gonna be our bottom piece and then this one is gonna go on top. So this is basically what it's going to look like. But of course, before we put those together, I'm gonna for sure sand some of this out so that it is nice and smooth and even. I'm loving how this is looking, and now we can put this top part, and it looks really good. I'm gonna use wood glue to attach them together. So we've got our wood glue in there, and to make sure that they actually stick together, I'm just going to clamp them in place and let it dry. 
All right, so in the meantime, I'm going to work on the wood part of the shelf. And first we're going to need to edge band the side just to make sure that all those layers are hidden. And all you need for that is an iron. And I learned that you really don't need to press it on for a long time to get it to stick. I definitely found out the hard way that if you press it on for too long, it actually will not bond and will ruin that glue underneath. So I'm just going to press it for a few seconds at a time until I notice it sticking. To cut off the excess, I'm using my edge band cutter here, and it has these little blades on each side. And to be honest, this still is really tricky for me, so if you guys have any tips, please let me know in the comments. I definitely erred on the safer side, and I left a little bit hanging off just so that I can use my box cutter to cut the rest off myself. Now we're going to give that a little bit of a sanding, and it's ready for stain. And before I start staining, I'm using a wood conditioner. This is an extra step, but it definitely helps avoid getting any blotchy stains on the wood. Then after about an hour, I actually put another layer of the wood conditioner and then I use my actual stain on top of that. I'm using special walnut here, but I didn't want it to be super dark and I also didn't want to buy another stain. So adding in that wood conditioner helped lighten it. And after this is dry, you could just seal it up with whatever top coat you want. And you guys know that my favorite is polyurethane. So I'm just going to do two coats of that. All right, so this has dried down now so we can remove the clamps. Oh my God, it's so cute. I love this so much. I think it looks really cute. And now we can paint it. You can totally paint this however you want, but I'm gonna go with the original and paint it white. But before we do that, I wanna make sure that I prime this just because wood is quite porous. So I wanna make sure that I have a nice primed layer before we paint on top. So if you look closely at the arches on the shelf, you can notice that there's a little bit of texture. So I was trying to figure out a way that we can emulate that and I found a wall texture spray. And with this bottle, you can do an orange peel or a knockdown, which I think is like bigger splotches. So I'm going to test this out before we actually spray it on our piece and see how it looks. I first tried the spray on the lower setting just to see how it would look and I actually was very surprised on how it applied just because it was quite soft and bubbly and it also didn't have a heavy odor to it so you can definitely use this inside. On another test piece, I turned the knob over to add more texture and I think this was the winner. So now I'm spraying this right onto the arches and I'm trying to do this as evenly as possible. However, if there were any larger parts with those bubbles, I just use my fingers to pop that and that also created some more texture. And if you don't wanna buy this spray, I think you could probably achieve a similar look by using something like joint compound or spackle, but I think this is definitely a great material to have in my DIY toolbox. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for an hour and after that, it's ready for paint or spray paint so you can use whatever you'd like. I'm using a flat white spray paint to emulate the original and I'm going to make sure to seal that with a top coat. I was just working on a test piece to make sure that this would work with the screws and I broke my drill bit and I just wanna finish this video. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to glue and then brad nail it. But yes, usually you wanna put screws in so it's nice and sturdy. To hang this up, I'm using some D-ring hangers on the back and we are good to go. This shelf is just too cute. It is simple and minimal, but still playful and trendy. I spent a total of $30.16 on the wood, the texture spray, and the hangers, and the rest I already had on hand, so this is a super affordable project. It adds just the right amount of boho to any space, and I am loving it. I'm seriously so thrilled with how the projects came out, but I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know which one was your favorite and what colors you guys would do these projects in. I'm a very neutral type of person, but I love when you guys send me your suggestions. And I also hope this video gave you some new techniques that you can use for future projects. And if you do recreate any of these projects, don't forget to share them over on Instagram and give me a tag so I can like and comment on it. A big thank you again to Our Place for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget to use my 10% off discount code 
code. I'll have everything linked down below for you. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.